Hello, my soccer universe. Let's talk Champions League qualification round number three. Ah, oh, this was an interesting round, and unfortunately, and I hate to say it, I only saw one game and I saw highlights of another game. But uh, yesterday, although it was maybe not the games that are that exciting because they're from the champions path where you know you get less nations here, from one side, not so exciting on the other side. Um, this is where it should be and you know i always hate myself for saying it but there were quite some stunners in there i have to say uh it started out innocuously with dynamo kiev beating uh, at that uh 2-0 i have to say both teams i thought or maybe dynamo kiev was a little bit better being away from home and given that lusk beat at that last season rather easily i did not expect much from at that but hey yeah dynamo kiev gets the win then i think the First, if not the biggest big stunner, Pauk beating Benfica 2-1. I so much would uh, I'm really looking at Pauk jerseys at the moment because I really need one. I for three years almost two years I'm saying I need a Pauk jersey and then I always get some some some, some less. And, uh, yeah, I'm serious now. Pauk, it needs to be. I just have to decide which one yet. Um, I could not watch this one, um, which uh, yeah. Uh, it's not centrally marketed, so I have no access except for the games with Austrian teams. I watched the live ticker and I always had, had the feeling, yeah, Benfica's having chance. I look a little bit at the stats and so on. Although the stats, you know, are very deceiving. You know, possession doesn't tell you much. We know that. But it seemed like Benfica has a handle on the game. For Benfica, it was huge. They made huge investments uh, this year into uh, their squad after they um, got thrown out. But you know, the league hasn't, hasn't started yet. So that gave Park already a huge advantage there. Um, but you know, at halftime, I think Benfica had already hit the woodwork twice, work knocking and power hanging in there. Also, I read the goalkeeper made some good saves. So yeah, I thought, yeah, okay. Will be an honorable exit for Power and nothing but that. Um, and it was one of those new signings that actually put uh, Park on the winning uh, road. Uh, it was Vertongen who seemingly put it in the net. I mean, now the uh, goal is given to uh, Janulis in the 63rd. Um, it was a run to the touchline, a cross in, and then either Janulis or uh, Vertongen put it into the net to make it 1 0 for Pauk. I was already happy, happy about that one. Thought, hang on, hang on. <laughs> 12 minutes later, Zivkovic makes it 2 0. Unbelievable. I really, this I did not see coming. Uh, and also, uh, my friend Yanis, who is Pauk fan, uh, told, told me had, uh, they will need a lot of luck against Benfica. Well, maybe they had, had, had a good luck, but. Look good, look good. Benfica only could one put one back very late, deep in stoppage time. It was actually, I was writing to Yanis uh, already, congratulations on a big win and then it's 2-1. I said, ah, away with that, don't be hasty. And it ends 2-1 for Pauk. Uh, that to me was a stunner because I think of all the teams in there, simply look low looking at squad, Benfica was the outstanding team. So Benfica being out is another knock, big knock on uh, Portuguese soccer this, se uh, this season after last season already did not go that well. Uh, Ghent against Rapid Wien, that one I saw, I mean not attentively, but I followed. Rapid had actually good chances. Um, at the beginning, if they would have a good finisher, and they claim they have, they didn't have this time around, and you see me already smiling. I'm I'm not unhappy that they lost here, uh, honestly. Uh, and I'll tell you in a sec why. Uh, first for first game, but then Ghent, you know, the game got a little a little bit more even. And I have to say, uh, despite all my not like for dislike for uh, Rapid, the green white against the blue with a little bit white matchup that actually looked nice. Um, Ghent got a little bit into the game, uh, but you know, not really pressing, but the uh, game was then a lot more even. Uh, and then it was a cross where uh, Dorsch just separates himself from the defender, I think it was Arase, uh, and can, has a free header to make it 1-0 uh, in the 36th minute. Uh, was not really coming, but you know, I take it. Uh, second half, similarly, the game starts rather even, and then a very, very stupid uh, penalty foul. Skim Yaremchuk after a long uh, break, you know, I think it took three minutes to take the penalty because of in injuries. 
takes a penalty, makes it 2-0, and I was uh, calm. Uh, yeah, but Rapid actually get the gut and some, some, some chances, and in the I think they had a pretty good one around the 80th, and then in stoppage time, uh, Damir runs, crosses in, and takes a good, good shot, 93rd, makes it 2-1. And it was only four or five minutes given. I thought, ah, they, they will go over. But there was the huge chance for Rapid to equalize. It did not happen. Honestly, I'm usually for Austrian teams because, you know, I'm from Austria. It is good if they make points. But in the Champions League quali qualification, you don't make points. You get the points for reaching whatever group stage you get. So uh, the only thing is that I thought, yeah, I don't want Rapid to get in the Champions League. A, in Europe, they will surely make more points in the Europa League, if at all. And B, they... I dislike them so much at the, at the moment that this additional 3 million or 4 million euros they would have got or 5 million euros that they would have now gotten for re-reaching the playoffs, which we had reached last time around. Uh, I No, they should not get that. I was more than content with that result uh, of happening. And now they're in the group stage. And yeah, they shall, yeah, they shall make points. I'll be happy-ish for them. Uh, but no, I did not want them. They don't deserve the championship. Not with this coach, who is a um, veritable A. And um, yeah, the way the players were behaving and the way they are playing at the moment and the way uh, they, they were lucky to get the second spot and be in the championship league. No. No. Okay, that was now my rant against Rapid. Uh, I, the, what happened yesterday, then this is what all changed the champions path. I think that really was great. I mean, Pauk was a great, crazy result. That Gant beats Rapid, although it was a little bit against the run of play, to be fair, was not unexpected, uh, despite all the trouble that they had. Dinamo Kiev, also not unexpected. But then Omonia against Cervenas Vesta, and I call it Cervenas Vesta because, uh, yes, it's Red Star Belgrade, but I don't wanna. Cervenas Vesta is. A sounds better, and this is how they are called. There, I know I should write in Cyrillic letters, but that would not uh, fit either. I did not, I thought that this will be a rather, I know Cypriot teams are pesky. Uh, that, uh, but you usually, I think for a team that has been now twice in the Champions League, you should be able to get over that one. They go 1 0 down the third, third, first, even each gets equalized and stoppage time of the first half, and then it goes all to the penalty shootout. Where, uh, despite Javier uh, Svesta having the advantage of Schulz going first, they missed the third and the fourth penalties, and it's a four to win for Omonia. Kind of uh, un unexpected, which we'll see, will set up a very nice tie. Ferenc Varus against Dinamo Zagreb. Again, another one. Dinamo Zagreb is kind of this, I, I don't want to say mainstay in the Champions League, but they are a Champions League team. They have been last year in the Champions League, have been actually uh, doing quite well. Uh, and have been seasons before Ferenc Varos, I don't know when they were the last, last time, ah, but I told you, it's Hungary against um, Croatia, that's neighbors, and also Ferenc Varos already eliminated Celtic, and they, again, I would have loved to see Hal Hal, so they were low, Lovrencic gets an uh, early lead for Ferenc Varos, and then an own goal from Uzuni uh, equalizes, and then uh, he makes up, actually, for his mistake, and gets the winning goal in the 65th minute. Uh, so that's a big surprise. Karabakh against Molde, I think this was the sleeper of the round, although they're the next one also. Um, nil nil, lengthy penalty penalty shootout uh, with uh, Molde going going first, Karabakh missing the last penalty. So uh, Norwegian champions are through. Tel Aviv with a penalty over Dinamo Brest. So uh, Israel against um, um, Belarus. So be it. And then I think the of yesterday's round, I think the most even was mid Jylland against Young Boys, but the results doesn't show it. But from the uh, before the game, I thought this was the most even matchup. I was really hoping that the Young Boys go through. This is the one that, uh, you know, I was already sad about Chavez Vesta, uh, but that Young Boys, that actually a little bit hurts, especially since I've just been in Bern. Um, yeah. 3-0 mid in the second half. Uh, it goes very quickly pear-shaped there. Uh, I think it was in the 52nd. Uh, fifth is first, Lefort makes an own goal. And then Dreyer um, makes it 2-2 uh, in the 62nd. And then in the 84th, Mabil 
makes it 3-0. Midtjylland, a very interesting team for stat heads uh, or statisticians like, like me because they have all this uh, interesting approach there. So what this does, this sets up the following rounds, which we've already played next week. Uh, we have Midtjylland play against Slavia Praha. Slavia probably favored. Maccabi Tel Aviv has to play against Red Bull Salzburg. Uh, that will be interesting from the Austrian point of view because Red Bull Salzburg has not been able to get past the playoff and twice failed against uh, Israeli op opposition. So despite it being heavily favored, I don't think this is rather even. Pauk against Krasnodar. I have to say I like Pauk's chances there. Honestly, I really like the chances there. If you beat Benfica, you probably can prevail against Krasnodar. Krasnodar is not a bad, bad team. Bad team at all. Then uh, the Cypriot Greek duel, Olympiakos against Omoni. I would expect Olympiakos to go through there. Uh, Mold against Ferenc Varos uh, and Ghent against Dino Kiev. This is a kind of the filler slots for the champ champs. Like, uh, it feels to me. Um, we have not seen a Norwegian or a Hungarian team in a long time. Uh, Belgium against Ukraine. That is a little bit more. Uh, you know, let's see how it goes. And then they flip flop the dates for the return legs, which are then a week later. By the end of September, we have a full Champions League. Anyway, if you've watched any of the games, uh, please fill me in, drop a line below. Let, let me know who you favor to go through to the Champions League of those uh, 12 teams that are remaining. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.